Realtree's Midwest Whitetail is brought to you by Nikon, Ozonix, Redneck Blinds, Rocket Broadheads, RTP Outdoors, Trophy Rock, Spot Hog Releases, Wilderness Athlete, Viking Solutions, and Realtree. Day 16, November 2nd. We went to Plan B this morning. When we got up, it was um, basically calm winds, a little bit of fog, and 45 degrees. 45 degrees isn't bad. I mean, it's a little bit warmer than what you'd like for, for good morning hunting, but um, those still conditions are a killer. We were going to go after that uh, wide tan this morning and make the trip all the way up that ditch and slip into that tree stand from the backside, but we just figured that when it was dead calm like that, it was going to be impossible to get through there without spooking deer. So rather than take that risk, we came to a, a, a spot that, I mean, over the years I've had good success hunting here. It's just not on my radar most of the time. This would be, like I said, a plan B spot. I don't feel like we're going to mess this up. It's really easy to get in and out of just a quick little you know, couple hundred yards. And... Uh, the deer do pass through here, so it's not like we're wasting our time, but more than likely, it's just a, a fun morning to be out in a tree and enjoy the beautiful creation that God made for us and, and sit back and relax and then um, make some serious plans for this afternoon. We made the right decision this morning not to go into the spot where the wide tent is living. Um, the wind has been switching about every five minutes. It'll blow, you know, from the southeast for five minutes, and then it'll blow from the northeast for five minutes. So it's been, uh, you know, it's been pretty messed up, really. Uh, and, and I wouldn't have wanted to be someplace where I had a certain buck that I was after with these light and variable wind conditions, it's just a killer. So kind of keep that in mind. If you see light and variable in the forecast or really low wind speeds, stay away from your best spots because the chances of messing them up are, are real high. My mission now uh, for the next couple of days is to try to get a line on this buck that I'm calling the old eight. Well, back in late September, I had a pretty good idea where that deer was and then he moved and uh, one of the guys spotted him from the road about a week ago. So I moved the camera in that direction and picked him back up again. The problem is he's showing up an hour after legal shooting time on that camera. So that means he's coming from someplace else. And I'm not in, I'm not close enough to where I need to be to comfortably feel like I'm hunting that buck. I need to know more about him. So I'm gonna run another camera over there and try to figure out maybe a little bit more about where he's coming from or at least exclude uh, part of the area that I think he could be living in. If you put a camera someplace and you don't get pictures, that's just as valuable as when you put a camera someplace and you do, because at least you can exclude the area where you don't get pictures. So I've got that to do this after or later this morning, and uh, you know, we've, we've got some stuff to do in the office, so it's, it's going to be a good opportunity to climb down, wait for these winds to stabilize, 
Uh, hopefully that happens before midday and then we're going to go after that wide 10 this afternoon. This afternoon we're heading back into that big oak tree on the edge of that small clover plot overlooking the open gate. And this is where I've been hunting that buck that I've nicknamed the wide 10. Uh, I was just adding it up, it's been nine days since I've seen a mature buck. And I think I'm hunting almost every day. So let's say at least seven days of hunting in uh, between the, the last mature buck sighting. So I think we're due for tonight. He's the only one that we know of that lives in that area, but that doesn't mean that during this time of the year you can't get strangers that move in. But he's definitely all the buck that we need for tonight. Uh, hopefully he comes out again. He seemed like he was very localized to that spot. Like that was really, you know, he was a homebody and that was his home. So, you know, we'll, we'll get in there again tonight and, uh, you know, we'll watch that little clover plot and see if this buck pops out. We got a bit of a trip down through this ditch. As I mentioned last time we went in and hunted this spot, we've cleared out this ditch so we can come in through the back the back door into this food plot rather than going right across the plot and into the tree. It makes the job of getting there a lot harder, but we do keep our human scent away from any place that the deer might stumble into it. Smell it and tell that she's not in heat. You see it? What is it? 